Hello again, 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 again. If you don't know how television works, like, okay, let's take a game show like The Price is Right. Oh, incidentally, this is Jason Nemero. This really is IS301, but we talk about so much more. It's so much fun. Um, uh, game shows. I don't know if you guys watch game shows like The Price is Right, for instance. They will tape several shows in the same day. And that's exactly what I do with those recordings. I'll tape, I'll tape four, five, six recordings if I have time in a day. Usually I'll come up with, 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 my, uh, with my presentation and I'll give it to you. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but just to let you know how these things work so that you don't get confused and go, I didn't know the work the world worked like that. I'm here to educate you, okay? Take it for what it's worth, man. Okay, so we're still talking about the blurring, but this time we're talking about tiered software that gets flat. That's what the blurring means, is when you flatten something. In the textbook, again, boy, man, I'm really working over this textbook, aren't I? When they try to categorize things, software defies cat categorization. Anytime you think you've got things nailed out, <laughs> it will violate every rule, and then it will turn that into a marketing campaign. A very successful one, too. All right. The textbook refers to operating systems, utility programs, and middleware. These things are um, actually, I think these are actually pretty useful terms. In, in all the things we've talked about in the blurring, uh, these probably are the most, the things that are the most relevant still. Although I can give you lots of examples where they're not very relevant at all anymore. Um, operating systems, you guys can read it up in the book. I've got the book right here, down here. I'm looking at it, and uh, I don't mean to pass it over so badly. It's because you need to read the book. Go ahead, go ahead and read it, and, and, I'll, and I'll help you understand and apply it into the real world. That's one of my main purposes here in teaching this class is to, is to bring some real-world knowledge to you guys, so that when you manage IS, you don't get uh, you don't get blindsided by the fact that there's this whole different world that you have now been taught told to manage, and you don't know what to do with it. Um, operating systems. I'll be honest, I'm a Unix guy, and uh, I don't. I'm not going to spend time explaining that. Unix is actually in this book, the actual kind of Unix that I use. Uh, the most and that I enjoy the most is called BSD, the Berkeley Software uh, Distribution of, Uni of Unix, the original. Um, let me, I'm trying to relate it to something that you might know. It, it actually serves as the underpinnings. It is the underlying operating system to uh, the Apple Macintosh OS X is actually built on top of uh, BSD. Or it, it, it's actually a fork of it, if you want to know in software terms what that is. Um, anyway, that's, that's kind of where I come from, and I'm that kind of guy, and I'm, and I'm real hardcore about my, my, my Unix philosophy and my Unix attitude, um, which is different from what you guys would probably be accustomed to if you're just a user of computers and and most of the products that you see uh, have a have a have a Microsoft base, different base made by Microsoft Windows. Um, these are all these are all perfectly good um, operating systems in their idiom, but you'll find out over time that things start flattening. Sometimes there's a whole bunch of your end users that don't even know what operating system they run, because all they do is they just learn how to accomplish their job. That's the first thing you have to learn in management. All this stuff about operating systems and utility programs and which ones we should use and which ones that might be familiar to a user, some that, that often gets lost in just, well, here's how you uh, do a, uh, a journal entry in the bookkeeping system. You press this button, you click on that button on the screen, another another window pops up, you 
push on that. It doesn't mean that having an understanding of the underlying software isn't helpful and isn't good and makes you a smarter person as an employee. But don't be surprised when a ton of people only understand your software based on just basically kind of a kind of a pre-programmed script. And that means that all this information about tiered software is only really valuable to your IS department that has to piece everything together to make it function and to present it to the end users so they can they can do their job. Um, so when it talks about operating system utility programs and middleware, all these things are getting squished together as well. I give an example here, like th this, this video right here, you're actually looking at a screen. I'm actually recording these things on a Chromebook. You guys might not even know what a Chromebook is. Very inexpensive thing that looks kind of like a laptop. Actually, it kind of is a laptop, but it's got great battery time. I can I can make videos till the cows come home on this baby. Um, it it this 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 explanation of it's really great, but people wouldn't have th thought that I could do this. This this little piece of equipment that I'm using to record this, self-contained, and uh, it only costs me. $180, which is just immense. Uh, Chromebooks have found some marketing in uh, schools um, where they're really cheap, but they want to have a lot of them. A lot of parents got all excited about the fact their kids could have a laptop at school. In the old days, they used to give you full, big, huge, lugging around laptops. Chromebooks were really an answer to that by making it small. You can throw this in a book bag and you don't even know it's there. And uh, I personally like that. That's it's just one of my things. Although I don't do book bags so much anymore because I'm a professional these days. And everybody thinks I'm weird because I'm a professional that uses a Chromebook most of the time. But that's usually what I do anymore. I mostly do research and uh, it works for it. Anyway, the whole thing about a Chromebook is, is that it hides distinctions. I, I turned off my background light, which is actually another computer that kind of shines on the side of my head, just in case you want to know production values and stuff like that. Um, it actually hides the operating system. The underlying operating system to, to the Chromebook is actually a, uh, a uh, it's actually based on Linux. It's actually a heavily customized version of Linux. Um, and then on top of that, it's just, it, it, it's got just enough of Linux running so that you can put uh, the Google Chrome uh, web browser on top of it with with a few little things to kind of handle the back end stuff. But the more they try to pull that into in, into the Chrome so so that it's just another, another uh, web page as far as you're aware of. And uh, these things here, this is actually uh, Google Slides. Um, it's actually the Google kind of substitute for Microsoft PowerPoint. And uh, so that's where I come up. That's where you get all the text here. I hope you guys actually read the text. I hope you're not thinking that I'm just reading off the screen. I'm not. I'm not reading off any screen here. See, look, it says click to add speaker notes. Do you see any speaker notes down there? No, you don't. Hmm. Okay. So this this thing right here is an example of this great flattening. You don't know what the operating system is and who cares. The only thing you see is a is a is a web browser, which you know um, used to be a very minimal part of your computer. Now on this computer, that's all it is is just a web browser, and I combine it with a web application, Google Apps, and I've got productivity software running. It isn't as huge and amazing and have many, as many bells and whistles, that's what we call features, uh, that, uh, that uh, make something like Microsoft PowerPoint so amazing, although sometimes it just gets a little too glitzy. This is real clean. It, it has to do with Google's whole thing about being kind of clean and simple, and it works really good. And I like clean and simple, and it works. So here I am doing this. But it's a great example of the fact that that any distinctions between operating systems, uh, utility programs, and middleware 
which is explained, it's all explained in your book, please read it, uh, fades out to just what's the user experience. 